I'm a marketing guru, so I understand branding. And so we created a brand that was nationally recognized called Tax Nation. And so we, we started just opening up a lot of locations. But this is something I found very interesting, even pre-pandemic, that most taxpayers will follow the tax preparer. And so if you get a tax preparer that you trust, regardless of what location that tax preparer is in, that taxpayer is either gonna come or he's gonna send that information. We're living in a time where interest rates are going high, major companies are laying people off, right? And even if this is not something that you want to take on as a career, it's always good to supplement your income, to have a, another stream of income coming in. And I don't know anybody that could not use an additional 10, 20, 30, $40,000 from the comfort of their own home doing something that the government has mandated. My story is not um, a story that most people would think would end in success based upon what I've experienced, but I had so much perseverance. I had so much, I call it testicular fortitude to fight through whatever I went through, every circumstance, and I didn't give myself any reasons to not be successful. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you want to watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, the U.S. labor force currently consists of 165 million people and the labor force is anticipated to grow by 8.5 million every single year, which is an annual growth of 0.5% over a 10 year period. What does that mean? That means that over 165 million people will have to pay taxes every single year and that number is growing. But listen, at the same time, we're experiencing a decline in the housing market, inflation, looming layoffs, people are being laid off all the time, the housing market is crashing, the workforce is shifting, indicating that there's no better time then now, to pick up a new skill or side hustle, we got my guy Corey L. Hughes in the building. He's a husband, father, national recognized activist for his community. He has started three seven-figure businesses, which are all recession-proof, pandemic-proof. He's done this in his 18-year entrepreneurial journey. He's written books, graced the cover of Time Magazine. He's been seen on CNN, Fox News, The Roland Martin Show, and dozens of national media outlets. His passion for people to discover their purpose despite their predicament has driven him to travel the world and encourage, equip, and empower people to discover their who, what, and why, and today he's going to teach you how you can become recession-proof by starting a business with low overhead and large profit margin. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for my guy, Corey L. Hughes. What's up, brother? <laughs> What's up with it, man? What's listen, going on, man? Listen, man, I don't know who gives better introductions. You or Cedric the Entertainer, oh, man. man. It was Steve Harvey. It was Steve Harvey. Look, it was, yeah. Look, look. I appreciate you know, it. And it's my pleasure, brother, because I feel like you know, this is one of those times where people are nervous, right? This happens all the time uh, in the economy, but I think that when we looked at the pandemic, when we looked at, you know, you know, the recession, the pandemic, everything shutting down, um, it, was, it was a scary time for people. Um, you know, if you turn on the news, uh, the news is indicating, not just the news, but you know, you know, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase, and all, you know, Morgan Stanley's laying off people. Like all the major financial folks are saying, listen, buckle up, because we're about to go for a bumpy ride. 
Um, and I appreciate you and what you do because when I look at you know you being being a you know uh, entrepreneur for over 18 years, um, built three seven figure businesses. Um, your your businesses are recession proof, pandemic proof, and you've actually created a system where people could like tap into that, right? Um, and so I, I'm I'm excited to introduce you to our insiders. But before we even get there. Um, for those who are just being introduced to you, um, who is Corey L. Hughes, in your words? Yo, man, well, listen, man, first of all, I'm honored to be here. Uh, honored to connect with you, man. Honored to connect with genuine brothers, you know? And so, uh, Corey Hughes, man, born in Chicago, Illinois, man. Uh, mom and dad divorced, ended up going to Texas, man. Played football, got a couple of college degrees. Uh, father, husband, person to just, I've learned to persevere and overcome things in life, right? And so my story is not, um, a story that most people would think would end in success based upon what I've experienced, but I had so much perseverance. I had so much, I call it testicular fortitude to fight through whatever I went through, every circumstance, and I didn't give myself any reasons to not be successful. Yeah. I eliminated every excuse. And so uh, it, that is the foundation of who I am. Yeah. You know, just a, a man that, that loves God, that loves his family, that loves people. And um, everything I've been through, I believe, has helped me have the passion to desire to help other people. And so I'm just a servant, man. Yeah. That's yeah. really who I am, brother. Yeah, no, I love that. And I, and I, you know, you embody that, you know, you embody that in your work. Uh, you embody that in your family life. You embody that in your personal life, in your business. Um, what you know? Why taxes? Because I feel like anybody, you know, you know. I talked about the stats earlier. 165 million people have a job, right? They're going to file taxes. Um, 8.5 million people are entering that space each year, um, and and. You know, you've actually had 42 brick and mortar offices doing taxes. Talk about why is uh, taxes the, the, the thing that's going to help a lot of people um, become recession proof. But then also, why now? Like, why now is the best opportunity? Well, you know, I, I tell people all the time, man, I'm not a university professor. And what I mean by that is oftentimes they stand in front of the, the students and they teach a subject that they haven't, ha haven't actually done themselves. Mm -hmm. So the reason I, I'm an advocate for recession-proof business is because in 2006, my first seven-figure business, um, I was doing door-to-door -door sales and the economy crashed. And so I had contracts with Comcast, AT&T, Verizon Fios, um, and uh, Time Warner. And so I had co a contract all over the country. And when the economy crashed, instantly all of my contracts dried up. So my business, the way I was able to provide for my family, the way I was able to provide for my employees, all was taken away because of the recession. And it was in that moment of feeling like I was failing that I made a decision that the next business I started would be recession proof. And so I started going through different businesses, right? And so I started doing uh, home security because unfortunately when people start losing their jobs, the crime rate goes up. So that's a good business to be in is the home security business. But then when I was introduced to the tax business and I thought to myself, you know, the tax industry has been around since the 1800s. So it's a business that's not going anywhere. It's not impacted by a political office. It's not impacted by a recession. It's not impacted, we just found out by a pandemic. And I jumped into the business and, and I realized that the number you stated, every single year, 8.5 new people, 8.5 million new people enter into the workforce. So there's no such thing as saturation. There's no such thing as this business going away. And it's something that the government has mandated. And that's, that was key for me, right? Cable is an option, right? And the reality is, I hate to say it, but life insurance is an option. Taxes is not an option. If you have a job, you have to get your taxes done. And so once I looked at that and I looked at the environment, I looked at the atmosphere, I jumped head first into the business and had a lot of success. And so, and because I've had success, my passion has always been to turn and help our brothers and say, hey, have y'all considered this business? And so that's the reason that I'm an advocate for the tax industry. Uh, I've been extremely blessed. I've done exceptionally well. And I've had the, the privilege of building a few millionaires in this business myself. And nice. so the proof is in the pudding. Nice. I love it. And talk about that transition for you, right? Because while taxes and, you know, preparing taxes, people have to do taxes, even that business in itself, 
you created, you know, you said, all right, this is a you know, recession-proof business. You started um, opening brick and mortar stores. Talk about that process of building that up and then getting to a space where realizing that doing it virtually is actually a, a better way to go. Yeah, so man, I started my first tax office in 2011. And my, my first year doing taxes was 2011. I did 350 clients. The second year, and I, this is weird, Ash, God has his grace over my life that whatever I touch, he multiplies. So it's a true story that my second year in the tax industry, we had 42 locations. I hired 260 people in Atlanta, wow. and I hired about 300 people in Dallas. Now, to substantiate what I'm saying, if you go into uh, Walmart during tax season, they have Jackson Hewitt in there, right? Well, Family Dollar tried to emulate that process, and they, had, we, they gave us 40 Family Dollar locations. Wow. And so in the second year of me being in the industry, I went from one tax office to 42 tax office, from doing taxes to training 500 people. And we had immense success. And then we started opening up brick and mortar buildings, right? Because um, we wanted to establish ourselves. I'm a marketing guru, so I understand branding. And so we created a brand that was nationally recognized called Tax Nation. And so we, we started just opening up a lot of locations. But this is something I found very interesting, even pre-pandemic that most taxpayers will follow the tax preparer. Mm. And so if you get a tax preparer that you trust, regardless of what location that tax preparer is in, mm. that taxpayer is either gonna come or he's gonna send that information. Then I found another interesting st statistic. At the end of the year, we would look at our numbers and literally 90% of our clients didn't even come into the office. Wow. And so we started creating a virtual system prior to the pandemic which is why we were so successful in the pandemic, wow. right? Because you prepare for war during peacetime. Right. And so I seen the trend. That's a right there, yeah, the, yeah. I, I seen the trend and yeah. we began to pivot. And so when the world shut down, it didn't impact the tax industry because people still had to get their taxes done. We already had a system in place where people could send it virtually, they go to the website. And so after the pandemic, I started thinking, if we're keeping the business, then why do I need to keep this overhead? So we started shutting down locations, but our numbers started to increase. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I began to create that virtual tax pl pl platform. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let's talk about that for, for a little bit, right? Because um, a lot of times when people think about starting a business, the number one thing that stops them from starting a business is the amount of money that it takes to start the business, right? Um, and so, you know, you know, first, you know, what gave you the, fortitude after like being open one year to now scale and expand so fast and want to open brick and mortar just knowing that there's so much capital and there's like you know it's it's a it's a high capital thing in order to get into that like like what was what was your mindset that made you say all right i'm, I'm going all in well, you know, man, first of all, I have an abundance mindset, yeah. right? Um, the book that I read says that he came that we may have life and life more abundantly. And so my mindset has always been a mindset of abundance, right? And so every time I look at something, I think to myself, if I give this to God, what could he do with it? Mm -hmm. And so God gave me a vision yeah. and I just started running with it. And also, you know, as what I know about people is oftentimes we come preloaded with excuses that make us comfortable. Right. And I don't allow myself to make excuses. I think that, you know, if I truly believe the scripture, when it says I can do all things through Christ, then I don't make excuses. You know, when I first started my business, I didn't have any money, Ash. Right. That's part of the story that most people don't know. Right. When I started my tax office, literally, I was driving a borrow car. I had been evicted from an apartment. Wow. Right. And most people don't understand that. So when I tell my story, I first of all tell them, let's eliminate any excuse because I didn't have money. Yeah. I didn't have credit. I just had a passion and I had a dream and I had a vision and I had a I had an engine that just wouldn't shut off. Yeah. And so when I first started all of my locations, man, I just got a bunch of people in the room and I shared my vision mm -hmm. and they bought into it. And so I had people to write me a check so that I could start these bit start these businesses. Right. And so I eliminated any excuse because it wasn't about the money. Yeah. And I went and I made it happen. Yeah. And uh, that's what I encourage people to do. And here's the interesting thing about the tax industry, man. It doesn't cost a lot of money to start a tax business. Yeah, it just doesn't. You so know, like, so like a few five thousand, six thousand, a couple thousand dollars. You would be you would be. OK, you ready? Yeah. Put your seatbelt on. Right. Yeah. It literally will cost you thirty six dollars to go to the IRS and get a PTIN number. Okay. 
And then you have to get the software, which most people are selling for three ninety nine. So we're talking about four hundred and forty dollars to start a tax business. That's four hundred and forty dollars. Four hundred and forty dollars. Okay. Now watch this. Juxtaposed to the average tax preparation fee in this country is five thirty two. Mm. So if you start the tax office and just do one tax return, the business paid for itself. Wow. So everything else is profit. Mm. So now from a virtual perspective, if I don't have the brick and mortar, if I don't have the rent and I'm doing it from my home, every time I do a tax return, it's just profit. Most people don't know this, but 82% of women in this country that make six figures, they make it from a home-based business. Wow. So you literally can sit on the laptop. What some people are watching this podcast on right now can be a vehicle for them to make money if they just think differently. Wow. If they just take this opportunity and run with it and eliminate every excuse. Wow, wow. So you're telling me, right, just, just, so, just so I can make sure I understand, you're telling me to start a tax business um, all you need is $36 to, to file with the, you know, to, to get your P10 number from the, from the uh, IRS. About $400, you know, just to get the software. So about $440. And now you're good. You're up and running, right? Good. And then on average, what would, so you're saying, you know, at five, $573 on average to do a tax return, which means that if you do one, you've already paid for the business. If you did, you know, 10, right? That's $5,000 a week. If you did 10 every week, that's 5,000. So, so somebody could literally, let, let's say if they only did 10 each week, that's about $20,000 they, they can make for the month. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and here's, here's the deal, Ash. Let, let's, let's, let's simplify it even more. Yeah. Right. You said it earlier. We're living in a time where interest rates are going high. Major companies are laying people off. Right. And even if this is not something that you want to take on as a career, this always good to supplement your income, to have another stream of income coming in. And I don't know anybody that could not use an additional 10, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollars from the comfort of their own home doing something that the government has mandated. Again, it's something that everybody has to do. Right. So all you have to do is literally get your PTI in, get the software, yeah. have a functioning laptop yeah. and you got a business and you can make money from the comfort of your own home. And one tax return pays for that investment. And so it's, it's really a no brainer. It's yeah. really a no brainer. And so what do, you, what do you say to somebody? Somebody's listening to you right now. Um, they feel like, wow, this is a no brainer. It makes it makes perfect sense. Um, but you know, there's a lot of bad apples in the, in the tax business, right? Where they're like, all right, you know, um, I'm always being warned around, you know, those who don't know, who, who, who misuse, you know, you know, doing taxes. So that's the one thing. Um, the second thing is the person watching and say, okay, great. That sounds good. But where, you know, where am, am I going to get clients from? My, my friends and family know me for braiding hair or they know me from playing ball or whatever. How, you know, how, how can I get my clients? So what, like, what do you say to those folks? So number one, what I would say is this. Um, outside of a businessman, I'm a man of faith. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite scriptures says that God will not put new wine into old wine skins. Mm-hmm. Right. And I I alluded to it earlier that oftentimes we come preloaded with excuses that make us comfortable. And so it is hard to have success in any um, arena of business is if you're entering it with already a mindset of why you can't be successful. If you're already looking at the negative. Absolutely. Every industry has a bad apple. Every industry has its barriers and its boundaries and its pitfalls. But the reality is I the way I believe is that sometimes you can be the answer to the problem, right? The thing that's bothering you the most, maybe you are the answer to that. And so going back to the new wine skin, um, I just believe that if you approach this opportunity with a new mindset, right? Eliminate every excuse, have the appropriate mindset that you can have success, right? I tell people all the time, education kills saturation, Mm. right? And so if you educate yourself, then you separate yourself from those that are uneducated. So when you open up your mouth, you know exactly what you're talking about. And then you can go and fix some of the problems that some of the uneducated have have created. 
And so you could yet still be the answer to the problem that you're complaining about, right? But if we don't get up off of our couch, if we just listen to what I'm saying on this podcast and say, yeah, okay, whatever, that's not for me, yeah. then you may be missing the opportunity. Yeah. And so I would say to that person that's watching, don't miss the opportunity that's coming towards you because of what you've heard negative about this particular industry, right? So it's opportunity for success. It's opportunity for you to correct it. If you educate yourself, have integrity with what you do, be trained properly, and that's something that we do. We train people how to do it. We talk to them about the laws. We give them the software, and we show them how to do taxes properly and have success. Yeah, yeah, and no, I love that. And, and you know, one thing, I mean, we, we, you know, we call Inside the Vault the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Um, not because I, I claim to be that, but y'all, if y'all look at the numbers though, we, it's like nine weeks, top 200 podcast, 500,000 podcasts in the, on the planet. You know what I'm saying? That's the sidebar. I like that. But, but you know, you know, what we try to do is talk about mindset um, because, you know, to your point, right? You can't pour new wine into old wine skin. Um, a lot of people are so comfortable being who they are, um, or, or who they believe they are, right? Um, that they're not willing to jump out and learn, you know, the best version of themselves, right? Um, for you, talk a little bit about your upbringing because I find it interesting when I was reading your bio, um, you know, you've been through, uh, you've been through a lot, you've seen a lot. Uh, when I read your bio to now see that this, man, this, this guy's, you know, a multimillionaire. Like how, like how, do, how does somebody who come from a background and you know, who um, has been through the things that you've been through become a, like it didn't match, it doesn't match. Um, I mean, obviously I know that this is um, the way it's designed actually. I think most people would, would understand that the easiest way to prove God is to take the people who've been through these situations and show that you can, you know, become the best version of yourself. But somebody, you know, talk, talk a little bit about your background, because I think there's people watching right now who, without the context of what you've been through, might say, well, he, yeah, he's, he, it's easy for him to say this. But talk, talk a little bit about your upbringing for me. Yeah, you know, so, man, my mentor says uh, something that has always blessed my life. He says, God never uses anybody greatly whom he hasn't first wounded deeply. And so there is, a, there is a connection between being wounded and being used greatly. And oftentimes you're right, people see that I've had success, but they don't know my story. They don't know that I came uh, from a broken home, that my dad uh, was addicted to drugs. That when my father, uh, my mom finally had the courage to leave. My father put a gun to my head and played Russian roulette because for some reason he thought that an eight-year-old had the GPS on where his mom was at. And so that was my experience coming up, right? It was a very abusive situation. And so I could have, and not just physical abuse, but most men are not um, comfortable in their manhood to discuss it, but I was also molested uh, by male and female when I came up. And so um, it was extremely challenging for me coming up, uh, but I learned to escape my reality at a very young age by reading the word. And, and my favorite scripture says that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And for me, my saving grace was I had a good definition of all. All is not just good. Sometimes even the bad things work in your favor. And so, and I truly believe Jeremiah when it says that um, God has an expected end, that before he formed us, he knew us. So nothing that I experienced in life took God by surprise. And yet he still had an expected end for my life. Um, and he told me that all the things that I would go through would work for my good. He said that he would complete the great work that he started. And so for me, what kept me as was realizing that what I was going through was never meant to define me, but it was truly just refining me for where he was taking me. Wow. And so um, I never gave up. Yeah. I never made excuses. I never quit. Uh, was it tough? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but I had to believe in myself and self-belief started with believing in the God that created me. Mm. And so once I began to know more about him, I began to understand that the reason that I was attacked 
at a very young age, even internally in my family, is the same reason that there was a hit out on Jesus' life when he was a baby. The same reason the devil wanted to kill Moses. Because some people need to understand that the enemy, what he will do to try to deter you from being successful as an adult, is scar you as a child. He will make you question your identity as a child, question who you really are as a child. And so if he can get you questioning who you are as a child, then you won't be as effective as an adult. I liken it to this. When I was coming up, Ash, there was, a, there was this, uh, not a cartoon, but this comic, and it was called Where is Waldo? You remember that, Where is Waldo? And, and you, had to, you had to find Waldo in the midst of chaos. But once you found him, it may have taken you some time, but once you found him, even if you looked away, your eyes would go right back to him. And so what kept me, I feel like I was like Waldo. Even though it was a lot of chaos, once I found myself, I never lost myself. Once I found who God called me to be, I never lost it, in spite of what I went through. The ups, the downs, um, burying my daughter. Most people, you'll never know that hearing my story and looking at me, but went through all of that. You know, buried a child, went through a divorce. Um, I talk about the story of, of starting three seven-figure businesses, but, but I don't, what you don't hear inside of that is my first seven-figure business that I started, right after I started it, the economy crashed. I lost every contract. I lost every home. I buried my daughter and my wife filed for divorce and all of that happened in 180 days. Wow. And so I had every reason to make an excuse, every reason to quit. But when you know that God has something in store for you yeah. and you believe that for real, for real, yeah. then you don't allow what's going on on the outside to impact who you believe yourself to be on the inside. Yeah. So I don't make excuses. I'll never make excuses. Yeah. And I don't allow people around me to make excuses. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and that's powerful, deep and powerful. Um, like as you were talking, like, I'm, like, I, like, I, like I felt it, right? Um, you know, I, I've been in, in, you know, I'll call them dark places. You know, I've been in, in dark places where um, it, it, it just seems like everything's like crashing down. Um, and for me, um, it took me time to kind of get out that space. Um, while you were going through, let's say, the 180 days of, of all of this happening, um, was your faith that strong when you like knew like I'm I'm gonna get through this or like what was so, or, or or what was some things or mechanisms that helped you cope while you were kind of going through the storm? Yeah, so I would I would it would sound good for me to say that my faith was never tested. Yeah. But to carry a casket the size of a pair of shoes that are 14 will shake any man's faith. Yeah. Um, to lose everything you have yeah. and not understand why it's happening. Yeah. What came out of that is I learned that sometimes you have to accept it before you ever understand it. Mm. And it was in the accepting of whatever God allowed me to go through that didn't allow my faith to waver completely. Yeah. Uh, but my faith did waver. There were times where I questioned God. There were times where I was like, why is this happening to me? What did I do? What did I do to deserve this? Yeah. Um, but then I was reminded in the scripture where it says this light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working a far more exceeding weight of glory. Yeah. It's hard to feel and believe in that moment when the statistics say that 80% of couples that lose a child go through divorce. And now I'm part of that statistic. Um, to get it out the mud and run from poverty and have success and for it all to crumble down within six months, yeah. that'll shake anybody's faith. Yeah. Um, but I'm grateful that we serve a God that even when my faith is shaken, uh, his faithfulness isn't. And so uh, he kept me through it, man. Yeah. Uh, in the moments where I felt like quitting, yeah. in the moments where I felt like giving up, giving up and God would send an angel, he would send a word or somebody to encourage me to keep going. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, I'll never forget, man, so I, I, I've got a 16-year-old daughter now named Serenity, but at the time, um, she was three. And at my lowest moment, it was a cartoon that she was watching that blessed my life. It was Finding Nemo. Wow. And Dory said, just keep swimming. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. keep swimming. Yeah. Just keep swimming. Yeah. 
And that's been my mantra for my whole life. No matter what I go through, I'm gonna keep swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Because you drown if you quit. Mm. But if you keep swimming, then there's, there's hope on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm always believing that, that when God says that I have an expected end for you, mm -hmm. right? That I will go before you and make your crooked places straight. Mm -hmm. What does that indicate? That times in life will be crooked. Yeah. But if you keep walking, God will go before you and straighten it out. Yeah. And so uh, it was tough, yeah. but I made it. Yeah. And um, we've survived every last one of our worst days. Yeah, 100%. But the way we survived it is that we didn't quit. Right, right. And so, and so in hindsight, um, you know, if you were to pull a lesson, you know, so far in your life, um, you know, you've been through, you know, from your childhood to adulthood, a lot of ups and downs. Um, if you were to pull a life, you know, life lesson, like what, like what is that, what is that life lesson? What is life trying to, trying to teach you? You know, uh, I, I'm going to say something that's in my book, first time saying it publicly, but I call it the, the ice tray theory. And this may not be for everybody, but I believe it's for you, Ash. I believe it's for some people that are watching. I'm, I'm a 70s, late 70s baby. I know I don't look like it, right? But I, I'm, I'm 45. And when I was at my grandmother's house and I wanted to get some ice, I had to go to the freezer and get an ice tray. So, but in today's society, if you want ice, you just put a cup up and you get you some ice. But that's not the way it worked for us when we was coming up. So let's think about the ice tray theory. What is that process? You would literally have to take an ice tray, put it up under the faucet, yeah. right? And let it be filled up, right? And then that's called, and each, each ice tray has a little compartment, right? And then you would put it in the freezer. So number one, there's a couple of processes that God takes everybody through. Number one, you're gonna be poured out. That's number one. Number two, you're gonna be isolated. In the process of you wanting ice, he will put you in the freezer and you're isolated away from everything else. But what I've discovered is in isolation also comes solidification. God will make you solid while he has you by yourself. Sometimes he pulls you away from the crowd because the crowd will cause you to crack earlier than what you need to. So he puts you in the freezer to solidify you. When you're ready, he takes you out of the freezer, but before he can use you, he has to break you. In order to get you out of what you in, he will break you, oftentimes to put you right back in what he took you out of so you could change the atmosphere. And so for somebody watching, I want you to understand that if God is going to use you in business, in life, in ministry, we all go through an ice tray period where we are poured out, separated, isolated, solidified, broken, and then he can use you to change. And so... Um, that's my word for anybody watching in this business, in, in life, in relationship, that God has a plan for you, yeah. all right? And you're watching this podcast on purpose, right? right? It's, you didn't just by happenstance run up on this podcast, but the word for you is that you will find yourself, everybody in here found themselves somewhere in that story, wow. where either I'm being poured out, I'm being isolated, I feel like God is strengthening me, yeah. but right after I feel strong, here he go pulling me out, breaking me again, yeah. but he's breaking me to use me. Mm -hmm. And that's what he created us for. Wow. And that, that's so powerful. And I, and I hope, I mean, I know y'all gonna rewind this because that analogy um, was so perfect, right? It, like you could, like the, 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 the visual, right? Visualizing that, and that's exactly what happens, right? And I know everybody watching this could actually relate to all of the ups and downs and uh, the, you know, you know, what they go through while they're being used. But again, you have to go through that process in order to change, you gotta change your nature even, Absolutely. right? Like, like your original nature, you're not, you know, you're not usable in that original nature. You have to go, you know, through, the, through all of that process to now this same person went through this process and now they 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 change their nature right they're like like they re, right renew the mind they renewed the mind they renewed their strength they renewed their structure they renewed who they are to now to be used in a more effective way um you know for that person who is you know at that space where you know they're afraid you know about about their job 
Uh, they're afraid, you know, they might be going through stuff with their family. Uh, you know, what's that first process for them, you know? Yeah, man, so, you know, um, you're in the perfect position. See, part of the story that I did not tell is that when I graduated college, I went on to work for Enterprise Rent-A-Car. And how I, how I started my first seven-figure business is Enterprise fired me. Mm. I was in the process of being um, um, promoted and because, which was you know malfunction on my part, but I was working so much that I allowed my driver's license to expire while working for a rental car company. Because wow. I was working 12, 13 hour days. Yeah. So I got promoted. You remember, I think it was on Friday, where Day Day got fired on his day off? <laughs> right. So I was working for a company get, and got promoted, and in the process of being promoted, I was terminated. Wow. I was terminated, it's part of the story that people don't know. Mm -hmm. I was terminated three weeks after I got married. Wow. Three weeks after I got terminated, my wife found out she was pregnant with our daughter. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. So I'm working at a, a company, I'm getting promoted, I'm in my 20s, I'm doing exceptionally well, and I'm terminated. Mm. Like some people have been laid off this reception. Yeah. Sometimes God will push you into the purpose that you're afraid to take hold of yourself. Mm. And so for me, I'll be honest, I don't know if I would be who I am today had I not been fired, yeah. right? Yeah. Had I not been, because most men, we identify our value and our worth with what we do. 100%. And so when that was taken away from me, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Right. But I think sometimes God will close doors to push you through the actual door that he wants you to go through. And so the worst thing we can do is resist when the universe is pushing us toward pushing us towards something, because that's what we're called to do. Entrepreneurship. May, as, that's not what I went to school for. Yeah. I got a degree in biology, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I was going to be a, a medical doctor. Right. Right? right. But I found myself in this entrepreneurship journey, journey, entrepreneurial journey. And I haven't turned back in 18 years. Wow. And so for that person that is watching this, that may be afraid, that may be apprehensive, um, don't. Because I've discovered that joy, that passion, that fulfillment is on the other side of you getting through that fear. Yeah. Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Yeah. Power, love, and sound mind. And so fear is just false evidence appearing real, right? And I don't mean to sound extre extremely preachy, but this is who I am. Mm -hmm. When you start asking about the substratum of who I am, what made me so successful is I had faith to believe that there was nothing that I could not do yeah. because of God before me. Yeah. He's more than the world against me. Yeah. And, and for, your, for the, the audience, they got to believe that. Yeah. They got to believe that you have everything that you need to be successful. You just got to change your mindset mm -hmm. and eliminate every excuse. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. And it's funny because, um, you know, I was doing a live the other day and I was talking about trusting the source, you know? I feel like we're in a time where, you know, people, people sh uh, shy away from, from God, honestly, um, understanding that like a lot of people are like focused on money, let's say. And, you know, in, in a lot, I talked about like, you know, we're praising the ATM, but the ATM is just a, is, is just what's provide, you know, it's just a, a conduit, right? Nothing, you can't get the money from the ATM if the money isn't in the account. And so God is the account, mm -hmm. right? And we, and we so, and, and so the ATM gives us the money and we're so focused and we're so happy that for the ATM, but if you took the ATM away, you could still get the money out. There's different ways you can get the money. Absolutely. But if you take the account away, there's no money to get from the ATM, you know? And so I think that there's a, there's this thing where, you know, people are afraid to, you know, give glory to God, right? Regardless of, you know, what your faith is, like God is the source and you have to focus on the source. Um, and I think that if people start to uh, realize that, if they start to realize that, all right, let me not only focus on, you know, the things, right? The job, the business, the things that were given, um, as who I am and my identity and say, you know what, let me focus on the source and trust the source and know that the, the source knows best, you know, that, it, that helps, you know, cause again, I'm just speaking from experience as well, like going through some dark times, like losing my mom and going through some things made me realize like, nah, like I'm holding on to the, the I'm praising the ATM, yeah. but it's the it's the account, it's the source, right? And so, um, 
talk about your you know tax in the box business right because um i think by now um you know people know you right they could they connected they they uh, they understand the importance of, of 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 the tax business um the low overhead uh the high profit margins um understanding that you are somebody who is you know wanting to help other people right so you know activism in your community things of that nature and and you know really being a man of god um if somebody is is like interested they're like all right you know what um you know how do i get started uh in the tax business because okay great you told me 36 dollars to to get my p10 number uh yes i can get the software but what software do i get but then also it's the training, right? Because people need to understand the different ways that they can, that, you know, they can really effectively run the business. Uh, and the best way to learn is for somebody who's actually done it. Yeah. Uh, so talk about the, the starting point. Where, where could somebody start? Yeah, yeah. so one thing, what, what I've done is, is you know, as, as a trailblazer, oftentimes we go through the uncharted territory to make a way easier for the people that come behind us. So when I got into business, the things that I created, it didn't exist. All right, and so what I've done is I've created a mastermind group. Not only a mastermind group, but it's a mentor group where we give you the software, we, give you, we have the training, uh, the technology, the marketing, the branding, we have everything up under our PH2 mastermind group. And so we've literally created like a, a hub and we call it tax office in the box where if you want to get into the tax industry, all you've got to do is tap in on our website. We'll send you information. Every single thing you need to be successful in the tax industry, we've got it there. As a matter of fact, I wrote a book, all right? And one of the books that I wrote is called 10 Steps to 100K in the Tax Business. And so I give that book away for free to show you that there are 10 principles that I utilize in every single last one of my business, but especially the tax business, to show you how to grow that business with no excuse, with low overhead, and you can have um, extreme success. And so we got a whole portal that we created um, where hundreds and thousands of people have joined in just this year alone and um, getting rave reviews because we not only give you the software, right? Companies like, and I won't name any names, but there's some companies that they specialize in training right? And they will train you how to do taxes, but they miss the marketing piece. Then there's some companies that teach you how to market, but they're deficient in the training piece. Um, but we not only teach you how to market, we teach you how to train, we teach you how to utilize the software, uh, we teach you how to brand your business, and we show you how to go and get clientele. And so it's the tax office in the box. You don't have to have brick and mortar. All you got to do is have a willingness to work, and eliminate any excuses and you can be extremely successful. Yeah, and no, I love that. Talk, talk, talk about the importance of the mastermind. Um, you know, at the time of this recording, I've invested over six figures in learning, in mastermind programs, um, in, you know, in just information, education, right? That's not college, that's, you know, just straight, Yo, this person has a result. They can help me get to that result faster. Uh, so I'm gonna pay, you know, in, in order to to learn that. Uh, but in in the process of learning that, I'm in the room with other, you know, you know, high earners or people who are looking for that same result. Um, and it has like exponentially grown the amount of money that I've been able to generate and um, and and really, uh, you know, kickstarted, you know. Uh, anything that I've ever, like, like my wildest imaginations, I, I kind of was able to crush that, but just by being in the room. Talk a little bit about that. So, you know, it's funny, you, you led me into one of, I, I call it the E3 theory, right? And so number one, I've said it multiple times on this podcast, I think the first E that you need to be successful is to eliminate excuses. Mm -hmm. So number one, eliminate every single excuse. The second E is exposure. Right. It's important that you expose yourself to people from different demographics, from different lifestyles, different thought processes, because how you how you grow is by exposing yourself and cross pollination. All right. You want to cross pollinate. Right. And connect with other people. Expose yourself to people that think differently, that talk differently. Expose yourself to people that process life differently. So that's the second E. The third E is education. Educate yourself. And I'm not talking about a college degree. I'm not talking about going to a university. I'm not against it. 
but educate yourself by joining masterminds, by joining podcasts like this one, by subscribing and, and put yourself in a position because when you eliminate excuses, when you expose yourself and educate yourself, you will automatically expand yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the key is expansion and putting yourself in a position to where you can have more success than what your upbringing said that you could. A good friend of mine told me this, Cash. He said, we're born looking like our parents, but we die looking like our decisions. Mm. And so and, and so you have you have the, the power to make a decision what your life is going to look like going forward. But the way you do that is you sometimes got to get around people that think differently, that talk differently, that walk differently, and that are going to elevate you. You know who my mentor is, right? And there's certain conversations that I don't have around him, right? So I sit at the table and I listen to him and just being in his presence has elevated my thought process, it's elevated my faith, it's elevated my tenacity, and that's what a mastermind group does. It's a lot of people that have great business plans, great business structures, but if they don't know how to get cheeks in the seats, if they don't know how to get people to believe, if it's not branded right, if they don't know how to market it properly, then it's just a business. It's not a thriving business. Masterminds, as you alluded to, it helps to expand, yeah. it helps to educate, it helps to expose, and ultimately it puts you in a, self of being, a position of being successful. Yeah, and I, and I want you to pay attention to that because I think a lot of people are so focused on, um, you know, uh, the most economical way to do things. Um, but in my experience, um, you know, you get what you give, right? And so if you're trying to find the, the cheap way uh, to, to, to expand your business, then all you're gonna get is, the, is cheap back, right? Uh, if you're willing to invest in yourself, not only is that a signifier, uh, not only does it put you in the room, not only does it get you access, but you know, you're also showing God that you're, that you're willing to expand, that you're ready. And so you're, you're, you're almost like uh, asking for help from, from the source by, by saying, you know what, w w you know, whatever substance you give me, I'm willing to invest that to make myself better. Um, and I think that people, you know, get to that space where they're trying to cut corners, they're trying to Google, <laughs> they're trying to YouTube their way to success where, um, you know, that's just some of the game. That's not all of the game. Yeah, you know, there's no shortcut to success. Yeah. And um, greatness is never on a budget. Mm. Greatness, oh, that's a bar. Yeah, greatness never goes on sale. It's yeah. never a budget for greatness. Yeah. So there is a cost that has to be paid. Yeah. And the sooner you understand that, the sooner you can get on the journey to be successful. Yeah. The Bible says that God gives seed to the sower, mm -hmm. right? And so what, is, what does that mean? That means if you have a seed and you sow the seed, then God will give you more seed to sow. Most people correlate that with church, but I'm talking about why aren't you sowing this into yourself, into your own journey, into your own purpose, into your own legacy. If I sow into myself, then God will give me more to sow into myself, right? Yeah. Because the more I expand myself, the more I can expand the people around me, right? right? And so it's, uh, to me, it's a domino effect. Yeah. And we've got to get to the place where um, we're willing to sow a seed into our own future and destiny and business, and, and that seed begins to expand. I, I was watching a podcast um, on the plane when I was coming over here, and um, I think it was the, the gentleman he was talking about, um, would I prefer to have a $500,000 check or sit with a billionaire? Yeah. Um, and, and for those of us who've had the opportunity to see 500,000, and we've had the opportunity to sit with millionaires and billionaires, yeah. All day we would take you know, that conversation, 100%, 100%. right? Because that's a one-time seed of 500,000. Yeah. But this conversation can expand my mind yeah. and expand my thinking, expand my network yeah. in such a way that it becomes a domino effect, right? But again, what have I been saying the whole podcast? God will not put new wine into old wine skins. Yeah. There are people that want something new, but God doesn't put new stuff into old compartments. Yeah. And that compartment is the way that we think. Yeah. Change the way you think, change the way that you live. Mm -hmm. And so when you change the way that you think about investing into yourself, yeah. then you'll change the way you live. Yeah. But it all has to start with changing. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. The greatest 
hindrance to a lot of people's success is not talent, it's not their past, it ain't their credit score, it ain't the money in their bank, it's the way that they think. If you change the way you think, you can change the way you live. No, I love that. Um, marketing, because I feel like a lot of people have great ideas, a lot of people have great businesses, a lot of people have good talent, um, but they never invest or learn how to market, how to brand, how important is that? Well, it's extremely important. It's, it's, extreme, it's one of the most important things, right? And so I, I'll, I'll get excited about this conversation, man, because you know I've got a couple of mastermind groups and coaching groups that I do, and they're probably watching this laughing because uh, I talk about a couple of things. Uh, mindset, tool set, skill set, asset, right? Um, number one is your mindset. Number two, you have to develop and understand what your tool set is. Then you have to develop a skill set with that tool set. And if you develop a skill set with that tool set, you'll always be an asset. Prime example, David is a modern day Uber driver. His dad tells him to go take food to his brothers. So he's driving the Uber over to his brothers. He sees a war going on. Goliath got everybody scared. David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, I'll fight him, right? Mindset, got me? Uh, Saul says, David, you want to fight Goliath, here you go, take my armor and wear my armor. David says, all right, let me put this on. This ain't really fitting me. No, bro, that ain't for me. You can take that back. But I got a slingshot and some stones. Mm -hmm. I got a tool set. Mm -hmm. But I've also got a skill set that I utilized because when I had to kill the lion and the bear back in the day, mm -hmm. I developed a, t a skill set so that when Goliath came, I could knock him down and kill him. And now I'm an asset to the king because I killed Goliath. You understand what I'm saying? And so what I try to teach people to understand is that number one, you gotta have the right mindset, tool set, skill set, then you will always be an asset. Once you become an asset, you asked about marketing. The question is who? Have you been able to identify number one, who you are and who is your client that you're going after? After you de de define who, the next question as it relates to marketing is why? Why should they do business with you? Once you discover why and those points, then you can put together a marketing plan so that you know who you're going after and your messaging tells them why they should do business for you. And also in the message, you should tell them what you can do for them. So marketing is simply about who, what, and why. And then when it comes to closing the deal, when? When can I deliver these valuables? When can I deliver this? And so marketing is just that. They make it more, they make it more difficult. It's extremely simple. Yeah. Who am I going after? Mm -hmm. What am I offering? Why should they do business? When am I gonna bring results? If you can package that message in everything that you do in business, you'll start to see more success. Wow, yeah. wow. Powerful, y'all. Listen, y'all need to tap in. Look, I would just join his mastermind just to be connected with the guy who knows how to overcome adversity and be in that room to get the wisdom. Because if you ain't get this wisdom, I don't know what you've been listening to. Um, with who you are right now, um, take me back to 18-year-old Corey. Uh, what, what, what advice are you giving him? Go after it. Yeah. Don't allow people to tell you what you cannot do. Don't take advice, Corey, from anybody whose life you wouldn't want to replace yours with. Wow, powerful, yeah. If they not doing it, why would you allow them to tell you that you can't do it? Yeah. And so um, that's what I would tell my 18-year-old self. Go after it. Yeah. Fight through it. Yeah. Take every shot. Yeah. Drive every car. Yeah. Purchase every piece of property. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Because in every, in every loss, there's a lesson. Yeah. In every failure, there's a seed to success. Most people are so afraid to fail that they don't understand that most of the time when you fail, if you properly position your mind, you're failing forward, right? It, it's like this, it, it's like my, my son, I'm teaching him to ride a bike right now. Uh, all of us who learn how to ride a bike, we all fail in the beginning. I probably got a couple of scars on my knees from falling, but because I did not quit, after I fail a couple of times, you remember riding through the neighborhood, riding wheelies with your homeboy on the back? But it all, starting, it all started with you being afraid yeah. and, and thinking about the scar that you got when you fail. Corey, at 18, person watching, if you can get past the fear of failure, one day you'll be riding willies mm. in the neighborhood 
thinking about that wasn't really all that bad. Nah, I love it. I love it. Um, let's talk about money real quick, right? As somebody who has, you know, you made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, you had a space where you've built, you know, multi-millionaire, you've built, you know, you've, you've generated millions of dollars. What would you say is the most extravagant thing you've done with money so far? Um, the most extravagant thing, I've, I've done a couple extravagant things, you know, um, you know, and extravagant is relative, right? What's you mean? I'm talking positive extravagant things that I've done. Um, started to trust. Yeah. Um, I retired, bought my mom a truck, you know, and so got her some passive income. Nice. Um, bought some land. Yeah. I started a trucking company in honor of my father, mm. you know. Um, so I went out and I bought six trucks cash, yeah. uh, bought some uh, trailers. And so that's the extravagant things that, that for me, you know, for me at this point, if if it's a depreciating asset, then it, I'm not even doing it. Because yep. I'm thinking about legacy at this point. Yeah. And I'm 45. Mm -hmm. The reality is, it's probably more time behind me than it is in front of me. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do is create a platform for my children yeah. and my children's children where they can take it to another level. Yeah. And so to me, that's the most extravagant thing I've done that I'm really proud of is creating um, a financial platform for my children's children and being able to retire my mom and you know some other things like that. No, I love it, love it. Um, my next question is impactful things, but, but, but what you just said sounds impactful, but what would you say is the most impactful thing you've done with money? Um, back in 2017, 18, 2017, uh, there was, I, I, I think it was 17, there was a hurricane, um, hurricane, there was a hurricane down in Houston. And me and uh, most people know a uh, civil rights attorney, Lee Merritt, a good friend of mine named John Dixon. We all came together and we created an organization called the American Black Cross, uh, along with aid from good brother Sean King and a couple other people. And we raised uh, well over $7 million worth of unused product and we took it down to our community. And we took uh, 18, 18 wheelers worth of product down to Houston and we knocked on doors and we gave water uh, we gave mattresses, we gave Infamil, and so uh, I, a lot of that I invested in personally, but uh, that was the most impactful thing. Love it. Being able to see people that were in desperation uh, have help and hope to knock at their door, yeah. that impacted me greatly. Yeah, yeah. I love that, I love that. Um, and I also, you know, I, lo I love being able to create those moments, you know? Um, I forget where I heard this from, but it's almost like every time you give, uh, you the people you're giving to, um, you're giving them permission to believe in God, Absolutely. right? Because you become that miracle for them, right? Where you know when when you're blessed, and now because you're you know blessed, and you could be a blessing to other people, uh, you know somebody might might be going through through some things and praying for some things, and you came at the right time to give to restore their faith. You know what I'm saying? So I love that. What, what would you say is um, the biggest um, mistake, right? What, like, what's the biggest money mistake that you've, that you've ever made so far? Now, you want me to get deep with this I one? Want, I want you to get deep. Now, I, I'm going to get deep. So um, most people don't understand that trauma not only impacts their personal life, but it impacts their relationship, but it also can impact money. Um, as a child, your father is your protector. Yeah. And so when my father did what he did, you know, my father was very abusive and, uh, yeah, the, I got so many memories popping in my head right now, but uh, you know, he playing, um, Russian roulette with me at eight years old was extremely impactful. Yeah. It impacted me in such a way that I did not trust men, right? As a matter of fact, everything that I did in life after those moments was to prove my father wrong, right? Um, the words of, I wish your mom would have aborted you or taking me to an adoption agency saying we don't want him anymore, right? My whole life was to prove to them that they did not make a mistake. Yeah. So everything in my life was seeking affirmation uh, from a ghost because my father wasn't around. Yeah. How did it impact me in business? Um, 
I didn't trust anybody because everybody close to me hurt me so no one could get close to me. Even if you had the answer, I would rather suffer in silence than open myself up to the potential of you hurting me. Um, I believe it was right here in Atlanta, there was a group called Goody Mob and one of his members was uh, uh, CeeLo Green. And one of the songs CeeLo said, uh, he wondered if the gates are to keep the criminals out or to keep us locked in. Oftentimes the gates that we put up in our heart, it not only keeps us locked in, but it also keeps potential help out. Yeah. Yeah. And I had people that wanted to come and help me. I'm good at what I'm good at. Yeah. But um, certain things I suffered in. And you know, whether it was a CFO or a CEO that came to me and wanted to work for me, um, I wouldn't allow that because I had so much trauma. Yeah. Right? It was mine. I'm trying to fix this and do this on my own. And um, I didn't know how to collaborate. I wasn't competing, but I couldn't collaborate because my trauma wouldn't allow me to trust men. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so one of the biggest mistakes I made was trying to run a business with people that I did not trust. Mm. Yeah. I could perform, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't let you get close to me. Yeah. But I've learned along my journey that if you're going to build a business, it is literally building people mm -hmm. and you cannot build people if you're superficial with yeah. them. Yeah. And so once I went through therapy and dealt with the trauma, then it allowed me to open up and actually love people and not see people as I saw my father. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the biggest mistakes I made was building a business and trying to do it by myself. Yeah. There's an old saying that says, if you want to go fast, go by yourself. But if you want to go far and deep and wide, you got to go with a team. Yeah. Um, so that's a mistake I made, but you know, of course, going through therapy and just going through the process and journey, um, I've learned to trust people and you know, now God has really expanded me. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, therapy, cause like, and this feel like a therapy session, I would be honest with you, because even as you were talking, um, like you were actually telling me my life. Yeah. Like as you were talking, I'm like, man, you know, I mean, I have similar stories of um, actually, like my dad not being there and my mom actually telling me that my dad wanted to have an abortion, you know what I'm saying? And that's why he's not there and, you know, without even having a conversation with my dad, I had a hatred for him because I, you know, this, even though I, I didn't, I don't believe my mother meant, you know, it wasn't her intention, but this story that she told me was playing over and over in my head and I too grew up not trusting men because, you know, the man that was supposed to be there to teach me how to ride a bike and fight and do all this stuff wasn't around. Um, and then I wind up getting to a space where, uh, you know, I played basketball. So a lot of my coaches, all they did was yell and then, and, and I, so I didn't trust them. And, you know, when I got to school or, you know, the, the, the men who were caught, like there was just constant reminders that, you know what, don't trust people. With, and and it, it allowed me to get to a space where I too, I tried to do everything. I, I you know even even if I if I knew that I needed help or there were people around me, um, I had my guard up like they want something, right? Right. And so, you know, what you know specifically for black men, yeah. right? How important is therapy? Uh, it's extremely important, Ash. I'm so glad you asked that. And, you know, um, as you can tell, outside of business, yeah. um, ministry and mental health for men is my passion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, this is what I want men to understand. I, I told you that I'm writing another book. The second book that I'm writing is, is called um, Lost and Found. Yeah. Because it, the subtitle is The Journey to Rediscovering Self. We all go through trauma, right? It's just different. And um, sometimes when we go through that trauma, in order to protect ourselves from that trauma, we create what's called a firefighter. It's a different personification. A man that was hurt by his mother or molested by, his mom, by, by a sibling, then in response to that, he creates a personification that is very cold and callous towards women 
and he is misinterpreted as being narcissistic, narcissistic or arrogant or being a mean guy, but really he's a broken guy that has created a personification to protect his brokenness. The problem with that is that when we create these, these personifications, I don't need a man. My father wasn't there. He was abusive. I don't need a man. Then when God sends a man to help you, we reject that man because really the personification I call the firefighter is really just trying to protect the little young boy that don't want to be hurt again. What would you think if you went out of here right now and you seen a 70 year old driving the city bus? You would think what the hell is going on? But that's really what most men look like. That child is yet still driving your life. And until you go back and reclaim the authority and tell that child that it's safe now, then you will continue to allow that child to drive the bus. And that is why as men, sometimes we will do things and say, I don't even know why in the hell I just did that. Because it's the firefighter. The reason I call it the firefighter, Ash, is because if you ever seen a house on fire, then the firemen come and they put the fire out. Do you realize that most of the time, the water that they use to put the fire out causes more damage than the fire itself? Mm -hmm. So sometimes the thing that you're using to put that fire out is really causing more damage in your life. Wow. And therapy helps you go and pull back that firefighter and tell that young boy that, and that young girl that it's okay, wow. that you didn't deserve that, mm -hmm. that that doesn't define you, yeah. that just because your dad wasn't around doesn't make you a mistake. And we internalize that as men. And the problem, Ash, is what we do is instead of us talking about it, we just go get more stuff. We go get more women. We go get more possessions. And we just pack it on top of that, that trauma and that hurt. But we don't understand that it's still seeping out of our life. I, I'm done here, but it's like when you had, I just got a chance to meet your beautiful baby girl who's 14, right? But can you remember when she was two months? You remember waking up, maybe changing a diaper at four in the morning. And maybe you took that diaper and you threw it at the trash can, but maybe it missed and went up under the bed. And you can't see it. But after a while, you start to smell it. You don't see it, but you smell it. That's what trauma does in our life. We don't see it, but the people around us can smell that something ain't right. And we have to take the time to search around and figure out what season were we broken in so that we can stop allowing that to impact the aroma of everything that we do in our life. Yeah. As a man, if we are broken, it impacts the way you love your woman, it impacts the way you kick it with your boys, it impacts the way you deal with money, it impacts the way you deal with your children. Um, I spent millions of dollars, Ash, buying affirmation. <laughs> because I was broken. Yeah. And, and as a child, I felt like uh, nobody really valued me. And I'm gonna say this real quick. Uh, I'll never forget, I'm um, eighth grade prep rally, and um, I just moved from Chicago. Nobody likes me, I'm the, I'm the redhead kid. You know, nobody really likes me. I stand up in the pep rally, the music stops, and I say something and everybody starts laughing. That's when I was first introduced to being performative to be accepted. And so the rest of my life, I performed for acceptance, whether it was in sports, whether it was money, until I got to the point where I realized that I was performing for people that really didn't care about me. And I was wasting my time, my energy, my money. And um, once men get to that place yeah. where you are okay with being just who God called you to be, yeah. then that's when growth will begin. Because God doesn't bless who you made, He blesses who He made. Think so, about that. So, so God can't bless who you pretend to be. God can't bless who you pretend to be. Wow. He never will. Wow. Y'all, powerful interview. I promise you, I'm rewinding this. I, I did, there's some stuff that I want to make sure I catch. So I'm rewinding this. Uh, make sure, you know, we, we talked about a lot. Uh, we talked about business. We talked about faith. We talked about therapy. We talked about healing. Uh, we talked about a lot. So make sure uh, you rewind this. Uh, make sure you leave some comments below. Let us know, you know, how this show has impacted your life. Uh, but, but then also, you know, going back to the business, you know, make sure you tap in 
for, with the tax business in a box. Uh, if somebody wanted to connect and you know get access to your you know to the tax business in a box, how can they do that? Yeah. So all they've got to do is go to www.ph2mastermind. Dot com. It's www.ph2mastermind.com. Fill out the information. Check this. What I'm going to do when you fill that information out, I'm going to give you a free copy of my, my book. So automatically that book will, will download for you. It's called 10 Steps to 100K in the Tax Business. Read that book. Check it out. I'll send you some more information about our program. So we've got a few programs, right? I've got three of them that we do right now. I've got the Taxpreneur Program. That's just for people that want to learn how to do taxes. Then I've got my, my PH2 Mastermind Group. That's for people that want to take their tax business to the next level. And we talk about marketing and so forth and so on. And then I got my tax office in a box program to where we give you the whole juice. We give you everything, the CRM, the website, we give it all to you. And so, and in, in the midst of that, we offer also one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching as well. So ph2mastermind.com, you get full access to me. And I tell people, just the reality is, Ash, if you give me all of me, if you, if you give me all of you, I'll give you all of me. And I promise you, we'll come out better on the other end. Let's go, y'all ph2mastermind.com. Make sure you tap in with the powerful brother, Corey L. Hughes. Uh, if somebody want to follow you online, where can they find you? Man, they just go to Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, just Corey L. Hughes. Uh, you can type in Corey the Coach. They call me Corey the Coach as well. And so uh, it's just C-O-R-Y-L-H-U-G-H-E-S, Corey L. Hughes. And uh, tap in with me, man. All right, y'all, we are closing out the vault. Another powerful episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Make sure, listen, a couple of things I need y'all to do. I need you to first follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. We have exclusive behind the scene access. If you join the Abundance Community, you gotta look, AC, Abundance Community, you go to abundancecommunity.org and you can see all of the behind the scenes because he's going to drop some bars of stuff that he didn't say on this interview. We got all of our interviewers do the same thing. So make sure you go to abundancecommunity.org. Make sure you follow me. Go to my website, imashcash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at imashcash. Look, I'm going to see y'all next time in God's will, same time, same place, inside the vault, the greatest money mindset show on the planet, y'all. Let's go. Peace.